Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. This video is coming to you on April the 14th of 2020. The COVID-19 virus is running rampant and I'm making sure to keep everything clean as it comes into the house. Today when I went to the mailbox there was three large packages. One came from Princess Auto which is a local supplier similar to Harbor Freight down in the States. The other came from Guelph which is an awesome package that I purchased from an online source. And then the third is an eBay package that I've been waiting for quite a while for. This video is a little longer because I show how to install the gadgets that I've purchased. So now on with the show. Okay, let's take a look at this package just received today comes from Longang district in China it says that it is a hi-fi stereo amplifier value is five and a quarter let's have a look And for a change, it's exactly as described. It is a hi-fi amplifier. It is a hi-fi MP3, MP4 stereo amplifier. The model is an LP838. Takes 12 to 18 volts, 2 amps. I happen to have a power supply that will work for that. And let's open it up and take a look. Comes in a nice shiny aluminumized case, extruded aluminum. Has your right and left inputs. Something about super bass. I'm not sure about that till I read the very descriptive manual. It's made in China. We've got right and left for your speakers, your 12 volt input, on off switch, some bass, treble, and volume controls. Takes MP3 in. This was actually ordered a long while ago, so I wouldn't have to come up with this dog's breakfast. That speaker set up right there, which I picked up at a thrift store for five bucks. It works great, but I was really hoping to have this complete with some speakers. So I'm not sure what we'll do with the setup now. The listing from my eBay page shows that I purchased this quite a while ago for about $13.90 Canadian. Right now that same unit is going for $12.65 Canadian with $19.21 economy shipping. You really have to watch the shipping costs when you order from eBay or from offshore suppliers. Very large manila paper covered package. Nicely packaged. This is coming from Guelph. I know exactly what it is. Been looking forward to it ever since I purchased it online. The trouble right now with the COVID-19 is it's very difficult to get anything unless you're doing it by shipping. The gentleman I purchased this off did a great job on packaging. This is going to be a good addition to my test setup.
Very well packed. Banana to alligator clip cable. Extra packaging. And there it is. This is an older model Fluke digital multimeter. It's designed for your desktop. This is the model 8010A. It's LCD. It has everything that I need except it does not have the continuity tone test. Let's have a look at when we plug it in. Okay, I've got the meter plugged in. Let's power it up. Oh, wrong button. Right now we are on DC volts, volts. We're on the right range there. Here's a double A battery. They're typically around one and a half volts. 1.6 volts, so this is definitely charged. Here's a nine volt battery. And that's a good battery as well. Here's an 1850. Let's have a look at it. No idea whether that's charged or not. Four volts, not bad. Okay, let's see if the resistance works. We have here a 250 ohm, 5% resistor. And it's measuring 247 ohms. Excellent. If you start being overwhelmed with all the clutter on your desktop, it might be a good idea to get a bench DMM. You can find them on all sorts of different sources. I found mine on Kijiji, there's Craigslist, and of course there's the awesome eBay. When you're looking on eBay, make sure you check the shipping costs. Also, you may have import fees you have to take into consideration. I've been in the process of upgrading my little workbench that I've got in the basement. This meter is going to be part of that plan. Over here you can see that I've moved my power supply to the left. I've also installed quite a few strip electrical power outlets and I've got my amplified speakers to the right. In the center down here I'm going to be placing this meter. I've designed this with channels going to the back so that I can have my monitors powered up, my scope, and anything else I need with all the connections at the front. There's nothing I hate worse than having to crawl around the back of a desk to try and plug something in. The other thing that I've done, which is very helpful, is I've labeled all my cords. That way I know what I'm messing with when I pull something out rather than causing damage or for messing myself up. So the plan is cut a hole down there and install this bad boy in there. It'll make it very easy to use and not on my desk. It'll be underneath this shelf. On to the big box. This comes from Princess Auto. Right now Princess Auto is shipping for free. So it makes it easy to go shopping there. got a few favorite uh, YouTubers and they all seem to be using these cutting mats. I went to a local craft store and they were very expensive. It turns out the Princess Auto sells them for dirt cheap. But once it warms up I'll have a nice mat to protect my desk. You can see this is a 17 inch by 23 self-healing cutting mat. Seems to be fairly thick. Looking forward to having it in here. It's a little disappointing going to stores and finding out how expensive some of the items are you think you need. I don't want to destroy my desk, so I thought it was a good idea to get a cutting mat. 
I eventually found one online at Princess Auto. The 17 by 23 inch mat was a good deal. Trouble is, they didn't stock them. Our current situation has enabled some of the suppliers to ship for free. This makes it ideal for things like this that are coming from head office. Before you buy anything, take a quick look online, check the regular suppliers. Sometimes you get deals, sometimes they're on sale, or sometimes you feel like you're getting ripped off. Sorry for the camera angle, folks. I've got it uh, hovering above my cutting mat, which is let's have a good look, completely deformed. It's too cold outside to uh, try and bend it down. And I'm in the basement, and it's chilly down here too. So, I have a solution. It's called a heat gun. What we try to do is just heat it up evenly and let the plastic relax so that it can sit on the desk properly. I've centered the meter on my little removable plate here. Now I'm just going to measure, actually just mark. Where I have to cut. Take that out in the shop and cut it out.
Everyone has some cool ideas or tips that they use to make their job easier. Tip number one is to go to the dollar store and get a flexible cutting board. These make awesome optical mouse pads. I found I needed this when I purchased a new Logitech M330 mouse. Tip number two comes right into the shop. I buy steel shower hooks at the dollar store and I use them to keep my collection of jigsaw blades all in one place. After I got everything cleaned up, it was time to give it a test. I plugged everything in, threw it across a couple of batteries. Everything's working great and quite happy. Got the mat out, placed the mat down. Everything looks good. The amplifier looks great. Everything is good. As always, thanks for watching. It would really help the channel if you could hit the thumbs up or even the subscribe button. Thank you very much.